in Ukraine. Russia launching its biggest missile attack in months during the morning rush hour in cities across that country. One of them captured by BBC News. So. Ukraine says 84 Russian missiles struck multiple cities, including the capital, Kyiv. 11 people were killed, dozens more injured, and a lot of critical infrastructure was damaged. The attacks left four regions, for example, without any power. Russian President Vladimir Putin says it's in retaliation for an attack on a strategic bridge in Crimea. Yulia Kovalev is, the, is Ukraine's rather ambassador to Canada. She's here live with us now. Ambassador, thank you very much for making the time. I, I could sense uh, your reaction to some of those images. And first off, you know, our condolences for all the loss of life uh, that Ukraine has incurred just, just in, during that morning rush hour, as we detailed. Can you detail for our viewers now uh, how severe this attack was from Ukraine's perspective? Actually, thank you, Vashi, for having me today. And uh, indeed, this missile attack was one of the uh, biggest since very few months, especially targeting purely c civilian infrastructure. For example, in the capital, Kyiv, uh, the missile hit the children's playground just in the center of Kyiv city. On the one side, there is the museum. On the other side, there is Kyiv National University. And Every, everything around was, is just now with broken windows. Another missile attack hit the uh, pedestrian bridge for tourists that were seeing beautiful Kyiv. That is also the civilian infrastructure. But more throughout the country, they hit the electricity grid, other, uh, other critical infrastructure, uh, leaving a lot of Ukrainians without electricity, without heating, without water, and in some regions uh, without internet and mobile connection. And this is another evidence of the terrorism, because precisely hitting the infrastructure, that is the aim of Putin to um, increase panic in Ukraine and also to destroy the infrastructure before the winter. Are you concerned that this also, the nature of this attack signifies uh, an increase in, in Russian aggression? And I'll tell you why I'm asking. I read this really interesting sentence in, in an article about what happened in The Guardian. For months, Russian war pundits, armchair generals, uh, military bloggers and others have been clamoring for all-out war against Ukraine. And then it goes on to say they were satisfied for a moment upon witnessing what happened. Do you think that assessment is accurate? Having many Russians politicians and bloggers satisfying with killing innocent people as, as today, 11, that uh, this is the madness of the country of Russia. Because having the political leadership uh, just happily uh, commenting on, on destroyed schools, hospitals, mm -hmm. a kindergarten, that is the madness of all of the Putin's regime. And the cruelty we saw, we saw this back in Chechnya, we saw this back in Moscow many years ago. We saw it in Syria. And now this is the same in Ukraine. Are we concerned? No, we are cautious. And many Ukrainians spent five hours this morning in the basements, in the shelters, in the subways, which today uh, did not work for a few hours because of many people use them um, as a shelter. But... Uh, what we are calling for and what we need now, it is the air defense system and anti-missile system. Because we understand that now Putin cynically will try to destroy country's infrastructure. And a 40 million country before the winter have at, been at risk of having no electricity, no heating, no water supply, which is the huge humanitarian disaster. So. We are calling for, for that systems for all of our partners from the NATO members and the broader coalition. And on Wednesday, there will be another meeting of the Rammstein, which is the coordination um, platform for all our uh, allies on support of uh, Ukraine with the weapons. And that is the right time for our partners to step in to support. And I know that the Minister of Defense, I believe, from this country is going to attend those meetings. I know that the Prime Minister uh, here in this country condemned and, and spoke with President Zelensky yeah. today, offering more support. Can you be specific, just as I would ask them to be specific in what support they will provide? 
is Canada, uh, you know, wh where do you really need that help for air defense from? What countries are you looking to specifically? It's usually the joint efforts because there are the countries who can produce and supply them and there are and they are quite expensive and there are the countries who can financially support them. But what I would also like to say, Yavashi, today uh, for many Canadians, today is Thanksgiving. Um, in Ukraine today is a very tough day, but we would like to say thank you for many Canadians today and uh, for Canadian government for being with us uh, from the February 21st, uh, 21st and being uh, with us today, having the calls with Prime Minister Trudeau and President Zelensky, Minister Jolie and Minister Kuleba, and a lot of warm words from Canadians across the country today being with us. So today on this Thanksgiving, I would like to say thank you. Duly noted. Um, and, and just to, to follow up on, on my original question. And on, uh, on the weapons. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, because I know that Canada yeah. has only so much to give, yeah. especially when it comes to air defense. Do you, do you expect Canada, for example, then to fulfill a financial role in backstopping countries so, that are able to supply that? So what, what we are also asking in terms of the weapons supply, it both uh, what we discussed already several times, it's artillery, it's artillery shells, it's armored vehicles, cameras, but also helping us and advocating with us for more air defense system. And here we need to be all, all together coordinated and let me say at some point creative to help us to protect our sky. Okay. And then uh, finally, I wanted to ask you, two weeks ago, um, your uh, government wrote, uh, the Canadian government, and had some very specific asks, more armored vehicles, for example, howitzers. Uh, we spoke then, and, and you didn't have a firm answer, but you were confident more was coming. Can, do, do you have an update for us on that? Um, I'm still being uh, optimistic on that. But you don't have a final answer from the Canadian government? Uh, Vashi, we, talk, we discussed with you, it's... It's something that does not come uh, as easy as, uh, as the other kind of support. But I think today everybody saw this cruelty of Russia and the significant destroyment of the infrastructure. And that, I think, should uh, support our partners to provide us more this defense, air defense system and more weapons, uh, because that is now the crucial issue to, to protect people's life throughout all of the countries. So this, this week there will, be, there will be an important week in Rammstein where all of our partners can co coordinate because usually the, the military support, it's the coordination of, uh, of, of our partners. So we are looking forward uh, for the good news for Ukraine. Okay, Ambassador, I'll leave it there. Thank you much, very much for your time this evening. Yulia Kovalev is the uh, Ukrainian ambassador to Canada. Hi, I'm Vashi Capello's host of Power in Politics. See more of our show by subscribing to the CBC News Channel or click the link for another video.